Hi, I'm Jeff from AllThingsDark.com, and I'm here to help you with your Airport Extreme and Xbox Live system. Hopefully I get it right this time, because I'm pretty sure this is like the 15th time I've recorded this. So let's hope I get it right. Okay, so first disclaimer, I no longer have DSL. So unfortunately, I can't show you all of the steps required in order to do this. But uh, there's a handy little website for the pieces that I can't show you called www.dslreports.com. Check them out um, for the specific instructions for your particular cable modem, and I'm sure they can show you what you, what it is you need to do. But, so I can tell you what it is you need to do, first thing you need to do is connect to your cable modem. You're going to want to access that by going to http colon wax, ah, http colon slash slash 192.168.1.254. Okay, that should bring up your modem configuration page. You're going to need your username and password for your DSL account. If you don't have that, you're going to want to call your DSL service provider. They can provide that for you. There's two things you're going to want to do. Uh, you're going to want to make sure that there's an option called let land device share internet address checked. Uh, that's very important. And then the other thing you want to do is you're going to want to put your cable modem into bridged ethernet mode. Um, I do have a screenshot. Uh, to show you basically what that looks like, uh, this is on the Motorola 2210, I believe. Um, if you're, like I said, if you don't have the Motorola 2210, check out dslreports.com, and I'm sure they have steps on how to go about doing it for your particular modem. But what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to change this protocol option from PPPoE to bridged Ethernet mode. That's very important because that get, takes away the authentication process from your DSL modem and leaves it to the... Uh, airport extreme base station so that's very important once you do that you're going to want to save and restart the the uh, connection to your dsl modem it'll probably do a reboot or something once it's done and it's back up we're going to want to launch the airport utility so that's in applications utilities airport utility Okay, so we're going to click on the uh, Airport Extreme Base Station, and we're going to do a manual setup. And from there, we're going to do Internet. We're going to switch connection using from Ethernet to PPPoE. This is what is going to um, tell the base station to uh, handle all the authentication. So again, we're going to use our account name from the DSL service provider. We're going to want to supply it with a password. AT&T dial up. That's just a service name that I gave it. That's not very important. You can call it, you know, uh, Moose Monkey for all I care. It doesn't really matter. Uh, connection sharing. You're going to want to make sure that is set to share a public IP address. Uh, that's very important. Not everyone is going to have this option. If it's grayed out, it's not a big deal as long as it's grayed out on share a public IP address. If it's grayed out to something else and you can't change it, shoot me an email and we'll have to figure out what that particular problem is. Next, we're going to go to PPPoE. We're going to want to make sure connection is always set to on. Um, if there is any information in the DNS server options or the uh, domain name, we're going to want to erase those. We're going to want to get rid of them. We don't want that stuff in there. And the reason we don't want it in there is because we want it to be dynamically assigned by your network provider um, once you get there. So make sure that stuff is blank. And we're going to go to DHCP. And the reason we're going to do that is we need to make sure that our xbox has a static ip address or at least a semi-static ip address what we're going to do is we're going to reserve a dhcp address for it so what we'll do is uh we'll give it a description we'll call it xbox live 2. we're going to want to uh, make it reserved for the mac address so you're going to need your xbox 360 mac address you can find that in the xbox 360 by going to the network preferences and uh, just looking at the ip information for that i'll try to do a quick write up on that. I can't really record it, unfortunately, because I don't have anything to record my television. Um, but once you have your MAC address, you simply put it in here, whatever it may be, and you give it a um, IP address. Um, make sure you make note of what IP address you give it, because we're going to need that in a second. So let's say we give it, you know, 10.0.1.24. Beautiful. All right, then we're going to go to NAT. We're going to configure port mappings. And we're going to add a new port to it. Okay. Now, Xbox Live needs three ports. It needs 88 and 3074 over UDP, and it needs TCP over, uh, it needs 3074 over TCP. So, what we're going to do here is public UDP ports is going to be 88 space 3074. Uh, that will handle both ports. Um, TCP is going to be 30, whoops. TCP is going to be 3074 as well. 
private IP address is going to be whatever we set our Xbox Live IP address to. And we're going to repeat the same numbers here. And we're going to click continue. Uh, let's name it something. Xbox Live. Done. Voila. We are complete. You are going to want to update. I'm not going to save this because I don't want to make these changes. But you want to click update. Once the base station finishes rebooting, you're going to want to reboot your cable modem again. Wait 5 to 10 minutes. Then you're going to want to reboot your base station again. I know that sounds tedious, but this is very important. You're going to want to reboot your base station again once the uh, cable modem is done. Then you're going to want to try your test again on the Xbox 360. Hopefully you'll see that beautiful, beautiful open sign and you'll be able to continue playing Xbox Live uninterrupted. Um, again, sites to check out uh, DSLReports.com. Uh, if you're still having problems, feel free to email me and I will try to respond as best and quickly as I can. Um, as you know, I hate to hear a gamer in need. So hopefully this tip helped. And if not, shoot me an email and we'll try to get you taken care of. All right. Till next time. Peace.